To illustrate some of the key challenges in computing with Turing machines and how to overcome them, we'll examine this task here, where we're given an input string, and we want to tell if it is of the form w hash w, where w is a binary restring. Otherwise, we reject it. I'll illustrate the basic idea on this example. First, we x out the first symbol on the tape. And then we're going to go look to see if the first element past the hash is the same symbol. So the fact that I read a 0 here somehow has to be encoded in the machine state. So we'll go along to the first symbol after the hash, and indeed it is a 0. If it wasn't, then we can reject the input right away. Those two strings on either side of the hash aren't equal. We x out that 0 so that we know not to check it again. And we move left past the hash over to the first x after that that we encounter. And now we're ready to repeat that process. We x out the 1 this time remembering the fact that it was a 1 in the machine state. We can forget that the previous symbol was a 0 by now. And then we move right, past the hash, past all the x's, to the next non-x symbol that we see. This is a 1, which matches what we x'd out before. That's great. We exit out, and then we rewind past the hash to the first x that we encounter. At this point, the next symbol is a hash. So we know that the string to the left of the hash matches the first part of the string to the right. But there might be more to the right. So we check to make sure that we crossed off all the zeros and ones to the right of the hash. If we didn't, then we reject, because there wasn't a match. The string on the right was too long. As Turing machines go, this is a pretty simple program. But as you can see here, the state diagram gets a little messy. Like the Sipser textbook, I've used a little shorthand here in the diagram. When two symbols appear to the left of the arrow, I mean to match either one of those. It's easier than writing out a whole nother edge. Also, sometimes I will only give a direction on the right. Interpret that to mean that the tape should be left alone. Here's our initial state, Q0. From here, we usually read either a 0 or 1 and proceed down one of these two parallel paths. We need parallel paths here because we have to remember whether it was a 0 or a 1 that we read initially. We move past the rest of the first string to the hash, and then past any xed out symbols to the next either 0 or a 1. Actually, if we encounter a blank, that means that the second string was too short and we can reject immediately. Or if we encounter a 1 when we're looking for a 0, that also means that we reject. If we encounter a 0 on this side, however, that means that we found a match, and we can begin the rewind process. And this path is exactly analogous. When we do find the match, we exit out and then begin the rewind process. Rewinding past all the x's, then we encounter a hash, and then we rewind past all the zeros and ones till we encounter the first x. And then we move the symbol to the right so that we're reading the next symbol in the first string that was input. And then we're ready to begin this process again. When in this phase we encounter the hash mark, that means that we've matched all of this first string here. And so we just need to check that this string here isn't any longer. So we move past all the x's. And if we encounter a blank next, that's great, we accept. If we encounter something else, then we need to reject. Take a minute to look this all over carefully and convince yourself that it's right. It helps to trace through an example. We'll do this for the input 0, 01 hash 0, 01. Of course, we start in the initial state q0, and we read a 0. So we transition to the state q1, xing out that 0. So this becomes our new configuration. Next, we read a 1. So we stay in this state and just move the head to the right. Next, we encounter the hash. So we move to state q3 and move the head to the right. 